Today we're going to look at uh, taking this old Muddy Fox Courier bike and turning it into an e-bike. This is the complete product but I'm going to go through the process of how to do this. Uh, obviously you don't have to recycle an old bike, you can get a brand new bike uh, and, and do this as well which has certain advantages. The battery mounts there, that looks like there should be enough room for that to go on okay. Remember to charge this before you use it. They don't need to be charged, discharged fully, in fact they're better if they're they're topped up on a regular basis. And uh, what am I fitting it to? Well, I got this, this bike's been in the attic for about 15 years. It's a 1987 Muddy Fox Courier. I know, it's, <laughs> we'll see whether it works or not. So you know, the, the cameraman is not confident about this uh, project at all, I can see. We have to take the chain set off. Uh, we have to put the, attach the motor, attach the battery, and attach the speed sensor at that point we should be able to do a test ride afterwards we need to change the brakes uh, we can remove the 10 speed here and remove here we've got some cables that should go under the motor so we're going to have to see whether they'll fit or not the first thing we need to do is lose the bottle cage uh, chain set probably take the pedals off first because we're going to need those and we don't need the front changer because it's a single speed at the front and uh, we uh, well then uh, we, once we've taken out the bottom bracket we have to see how things are going to fit in whether we've got clearance of the cables or whether this is all just a terrible idea and we need some different kind of bikes. Let's get the pedals off, 15 mil spanner, something fairly thin and remember that the thread is different on, uh, on the left hand side it's uh, you turn it uh, clockwise to undo if I can find some way to get a good grip on this somewhere. Maybe that. There we go. So turn it that way and we'll uh, keep these pedals for our build. What next? Front derailleur I reckon. Uh, we'll take the cable off. We don't need the cable so we can... Uh, it's looking pretty rusty this derailleur anyway. Be, uh, Seems to be working okay, but in some ways it's a bit of a shame to you to lose this nice ovalized XH crank set. It worked pretty well. For um, people like Sky and company made uh, egg shaped rings, you see it's got pretty rusty. Maybe uh, there we go. Yeah, for Sky & Co made uh, egg shaped rings fashionable. Shimano was selling this kind of chain set back in the 80s. And uh, I don't know whether it really works an egg shaped uh, overlies ring, but uh, you can certainly feel as you go over top dead centre. The only thing I'll say is that the uh, Shimano rings are a slightly different pattern and look at that there's a thing you've got to, to actually take this apart it's not quite so straightforward without breaking the chain I may, need to I may need to change the chain anyway next job get the crank arms and bottom bracket out so he's got little plastic end caps on that we can just all night with that thing So that's the crank bolt undone. Then we can get the extractor in. I'm anticipating this being pretty easy. So there you can see what the rings are like. Very, very pronounced egg shape and a little bit less so on the outer ring. We've got uh, most of the bottom bracket out now and remember that uh, this left hand thread, this right hand thread, so you're turning it uh, clockwise to undo which uh, don't spend your time trying to do it up even further, this cup and as you can see, it slides in reasonably nicely and that should still leave enough room for that cable rear brake seems to work Welcome back to the e-bike build and it's taken literally 
hours and hours to get the bike stripped down, bottom bracket removed, all the cables are rusty, need to be replaced, uh, taken the controls off the off the handlebars, but we're now ready to start assembling things, a little breakage on the mudguard there. So first conclusion is if you want to uh, do an e-bike conversion quickly, get a new bike to convert, don't get something out of the attic that's been sitting there for 15 years rusting away because it's going to be a nightmare. So I mean at the Probably this is a good candidate, this bike here, it's, uh, it's a Decathlon uh, B-Twin, it's 300 euros, a couple of hundred uh, quid, comes with disc brakes which will be good with a motor, front suspension, much better starting point really than uh, taking this bike out of the attic, everything's messy, I'm messy, uh, but we'll uh, carry on, see how we get on with it. So I've decided the next thing to do uh, is put on the new rear brake and also fit the new gear changer. I've got a twist grip because that was what was easily available to replace the X-Age thumb shifter. That's because these two cables go under the... I'll show you down here. Not got any help today. These cables go down under the bottom bracket so once the motor's in place they're going to be less accessible. Had to rust treat a lot of uh, the bottom bracket area and paint it with some hammerite so hopefully that should be okay. We fitted the brakes, new brake cables. Uh, there's the thumb shifter. We've got a uh, gear change here, so that's all fitted, all cabled. And now we're going to look at this the motor in place here. We've repainted over, or we've painted over all the rust. Here's how it goes in place: motor here, and we have uh, two lock rings. This strange bracket goes there somewhere and those to hold the cranks on. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, slide, all this, slide all this into place. Everything greased. We're going to slide the motor in. with at least 10mm on this side, which we have. That clamps onto there with these two holders. We need to take off the uh, protective cover at this point. Okay, so what we've done, we put this bracket on and done it up with these Allen key bolts and then we put on the first lock ring. This needs to be tightened to about 45 to 60 new, Newton meters torque uh, and then we can put the chain set on and then we'll look at doing the battery. So uh, just to show you, so I've put the crank arm on this side. It's all in place, seems all right. These two uh, nuts are now tightened up against each other and should lock it in place. Uh, there is a special tool you can get but uh, it's not, not particularly um, easy to get uh, from your local bike shop or somewhere. You've got to order it from China that fits in there. If I have any problems I'll just take this crank arm off and uh, re -torque it. As I say 45 to 60 newton meters, put the other crank arm on like so, and then we'll look at the battery. So apart from the controller, last big job is uh, fitting the battery holder. We weigh, what do we weigh the battery at? About three kilos? With a litre of water you might take on a, on a down tube weighs a kilo, so it's three times what you'd normally take, so these are actually steel bolts, which I hope will be sufficient. Okay so everything's wired up, um, it's just done temporarily because the cabling's a bit long I have to work out how to uh, sh uh, shorten things. Important thing is speed sensor here on the back, if you don't have any speed the motor won't cut in. It's The controller's up here, everything's colour coded so you've got the brakes to cut out the motor when you're going along. 
battery is this big cable here. So in theory, it should it should work. Press this button here on this little controller on. This uh, changes your level of pedal assist. Um, if you see the little engine sign here, it means you're not wired something up correctly. So you need to have a look around at what's wrong. So you have a look here at the controller. I'm on level one. I don't want to go any quicker than that. No engine sign, so that's okay. So let's see if it. Uh... Oh, there it goes. Whoa. And the cutouts work. Well, that's pretty cool. This is the bike pretty much finished. Uh, I've even cleaned it a little bit. Uh, here we have the pedal X speed sensor, which you need. So when you start pedaling, it actually tells the motor to, uh, to drive. I've run the main wiring loom up along the top tube rather than along the down tube, because it's quite long. Uh, I cut the uh, battery lead down a little bit. Again, it was too long and it's run underneath in a little drip loop. I haven't sealed the entrance into the battery. I have to do that. Up here, all fairly neat and tidy, brakes mounted. The uh, pedal assist controller, very easy to reach here. And the throttle just underneath here. And cable run around the front here. And I've even managed to put a bell on there. And uh, here we go, battery fitted, so that's it. And uh, just to have a look, here we, um, you can see the, I'll have a look at that in a second, the chain line. It's, it's a little bit out here, so the, the lower two, three gears are good. It's a six speed, um, I don't know what the smallest cog is, but it's a 32 largest cog there. And uh, it seems to have quite a good range for the hills around here, which are up to about 10%. At some point I might put a smaller, smaller sprocket on the front. And just some interesting, see this is uh, quite an old bike, and it's got one of these U-brakes mounted underneath the bottom bracket. They're fairly powerful, but they tend to get uh, clogged up with uh, dirt and stuff and seize up. And I had quite a bit of difficulty getting this one running again. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty good. I took it out on a ride into work yesterday on the commute, 27 kilometers. It used one bar on the sensor up here. And uh, the road had a, a climb of about 200 meters vertical, at uh, largely at 10%. And um, it went up that, oh, that fine. And the front, no discs on this, just got a pair of V-brakes on the front, they seem to give enough stopping power. So there we go, it's pretty good.